Invite your fellow creatives to contribute. Let's be more than passive subscribers. It's time we decide to be the good in our community. We are the variable. The path of product development and entrepreneurship is challenging. That's why we talk with industry experts who share their uncensored advice in order to help you, the next generation of innovators and entrepreneurs, successfully take your ideas from conception to fruition. This is The Variable. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Variable. We're glad to have you joining us today. As you well know, my name is Russ Clough, and... We've got a cool program put together for you. So, if you're anything like me, I know that you guys probably have the attention span of a squirrel on crack. So, to start things off with a bang, we want to make sure that we hit something right at the beginning, out the gate, that is helpful and useful. And that's going to be taken directly from Mike Montero's Design is a Job. Now, this isn't a sponsored message. I purchased this book with my own money and I love what he said in chapter two on getting clients. What he said, I still laugh. He says, I'd rather wrestle lady Bengal tigers in heat with meat strapped to my genitals than look for new clients. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel sometimes. He says, all kidding set aside, getting clients can be done, it can be one of the most daunting challenges a designer that will face. After all, until you've actually secured a client, you can't do the job. That said, the biggest surefire way not to get clients is to be worried and freaked out. Clients are looking for confidence when they hire. You wanna make sure you don't land a client? Then act freaked out and worried. I'm not saying play hard to get, I'm telling you to behave like someone who I'd entrust writing a large check to while putting my professional reputation in your hands. So there you go, folks. There's lots of other great advice on how to get clients, how to succeed as a designer. So go check it out. Design is a Job by Mike Montero. And if you guys have cool stuff like that, inspirational design advice that you'd love to share, send it in. Hit me up. My email is russ at the variable dot design, and we'll throw it on the show. A couple items of housekeeping, a couple of housekeeping items that we're gonna hit before we go to our commercial break and introduce our guest speaker. Number one being our student spotlight program. In addition to running Q&A sessions like this with featured guests, we also have student spotlight programs. And what that is, is students get to come onto the show, live broadcast and showcase one project and get meaningful feedback from mentors such as yourself, maybe. And um, it's a great opportunity to network, build relationships. Uh, we encourage you guys to go check out the variable.design slash spotlight, where you can fill out forms as a student to nominate yourself, as a faculty member to nominate students to participate in this program, and as working mentors to help give feedback and join the program. So definitely check it out. If you guys have further questions, you can hit me up. Always happy to help you guys out. Um, during this program, this is not just a little lecture. We want you guys to participate. So as we go to commercial breaks, there's gonna be some questions that you guys can submit answers to and win sponsored giveaway prizes. These prizes are not, um, how shall I put it? Uh, I, I'm paying for it myself to ship, but if you guys would like to make a contribution, there's gonna be a link down below on the YouTube channel. Tip to ship, help us out. And uh, we'll put it in the chat as well if you're tuning in from Zoom. So without further ado, we're going to stay tuned. We're going to have this quick commercial break and we'll introduce our featured guest.
Welcome back. I hope you all sent in your answers during the commercial break. If not, you'll have one other opportunity to win a free sponsored prize later in the program. So stick around for the announcement right before we open up the lines for our Q&A session. Well, I know that you're anxious to hear from him and so am I. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce the one and only Jacob Ballard. Jacob is a senior industrial designer at Newell Brands in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and is the sketching mastermind behind the widely known Instagram account, Sketch Fresh. He graduated from Purdue University in 2009 and afterwards started his own freelance design business. He then transitioned to the global ID team at Purina Pet Care in St. Louis. There, he helped the team create the future product vision for pet owners and their furry family members. His last design adventure brought him to Denver, Colorado, where he co-ran a design studio focused on lifestyle products and tapping into the rich entrepreneurial culture that Denver fosters. Today at Newell Brands, he works within the Global Design Center and gets to play with cross disciplines to help create the future with an ever-growing portfolio of products and brands. When he's not making an impact at his nine to five, he's inspiring the rest of us with stellar sketch work that he shares online. He's definitely an influential talent that you're going to want to follow. Jacob, thanks for joining us on The Variable. We're glad to have you. What is up, dude? Really excited to be here, man. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm excited to have you joining us on the show. This is great. Here, I'll put the split screen so we can both see each other. Oh, um, yeah, Jacob, right. yeah, well, we were going through that intro, and I noticed something that I found really interesting. One being... Uh, if you look at your work history and so forth, you right out the gate, as soon as you graduated from university, jumped right into freelance work, which is kind of a ballsy thing. I mean, I don't know about you. Like I wasn't set to freelance like right after graduating. Like, why did that happen? Like, tell us the story. How come, how come you decided to freelance right outside of school? First of all, I don't recommend it. Um, okay. Probably not, the, like, on paper, probably not the smartest move, right? Um, okay. So let me let me let me try to answer that in, in the best way I can. So when when I was graduating, um, my uh, current wife, um, then girlfriend, we, we kind of had this agreement that um, I mean there was no way we were splitting up. We knew that we were like the ones, and it was just like okay. a matter of time for us to, to get married. So we we had sure. an agreement. The first one to land work, that's where the other one would follow. Uh, she bested me. She's just a a better person than me in so many ways, but sure. she bested me. And uh, that brought us to St. Louis. It's kind of heart crushing because after we kind of accepted that, um, I had uh, two, two studios come to me with, with kind of some serious intention to, to bring on board that I had to kind of push away and say no to. Um, but I stand by my commitment. I, I would do it again. Um, so the freelance thing was kind of built out of a, kind of a necessity to survive. Um, at the time, there wasn't a ton of industrial design um, happening in St. Louis. Okay. Um, that, this was back in you know 2010. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, I, I just I had to I had to get after it. Okay. Well, then, having gone through that whole experience yourself, what would your message to those who are like considering doing the same thing be? Those who are on the fence and thinking, all right, I'm just going to go for it and be a freelancer full time and pull the trigger. Like, like, what would you say to them? I think, I think it comes down to a life stage. I think at the time, sure. my life stage, my life chapter uh, really empowered me to have kind of the freedom to do that. Uh, now, now I'm definitely not with the life's chapter to be able to emotionally, I think, give myself that freedom to, to take that. Leap. Sure. So number one, I think it's like life chapter, uh, a chance to, 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 to just have some of that flexibility and freedom. Um, number two is I would say, uh, try, try to as best you can know what you're really getting into. I think I had some delusions of grandeur of what I think or thought right. what freelance was gonna be. Like I'm a designer, <laughs> I graduated school, I got my little plaque. Uh, I just put my name out there and say, I can design stuff and people will come, right? That's, that's not right. how it is <laughs> at all. So I think, I think managing those expectations on what's really going to happen in the real world, um, uh, you kind of have to face that and know that you're going to be told no a lot and you just have to kind of manage that, that no and, and just work until you get a yes. Okay. Well, okay. It, it, we mentioned at the very beginning that very first tip that I gave straight from design is a job was talking about how to be confident. Um, 
I want to hear the gospel of Jacob Ballard as far as how to, what were some of the things that you learned as far as what does work to get clients if you are freelancing and what absolutely does not work when you're trying to get new clients? Blindly sending LinkedIn invites, I would say it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I, I, as a as as um as someone that's been in the industry for you know a few years now, I, I think I personally get a little there's a disconnect, right? When someone sends you a blind LinkedIn invite, um that's there's mm-hmm. a disconnect there. I think the more authentic, I think first of all, you have to be authentic about it. I think if I was coming out right. of school, um the best advice I can give is to seek advice, meaning People already know you don't have a long history of experience, but I think what you do have to offer is this opportunity to kind of start a conversation. So if you can connect with professionals and just say, hey, listen, could you look at my portfolio? I really love some critique. I think that opens the door and that begins some dialogue. In the beginning, you really just need to start the dialogue, um, finding a way to get your foot in the door. And I mean, the good news is these days with the digital age, there's so much accessibility to it these days. Yeah. Well, I think you hit on a number. Well, one of the main points in what has been successful for me as I have built my own business and I connect with clients and stuff, it's making connections and being genuine and honest with people. Cause let's face it. I, I, I know there's a number of people who will send even to this day, me messages saying, mm-hmm. uh, Hey, I'd like to pick your brain where you will. Are you willing to sit with me for some coffee? And, and I'd like to this and, 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 and I get that. Believe me, we've all been there. Um, but the find I find that as if I can be genuine and try to make a mutually beneficial situation, cause let, let, let's face it. There's only so, Sure, I guess it's mutually beneficial. If you're asking somebody for a favor and they're going to meet with you and you're going to buy them coffee, I mean, that's kind of kind of helpful. But if you can somehow build a relationship with somebody and say, you know, I'm, uh, of course, would like some help from you, some advice, but if there's anything that I can do that can be helpful, I see that maybe you're going through some of these pain points in what you've got going on. Maybe I can be of help for that. Let, let's talk. I don't know. I think, I think Trying to be just time, right? I think, yes. I think- good partnerships spawn from authentic relationships. And I think that's, these days, I think that's the disconnect. I think those authentic relationships are trying yeah. to force via quick LinkedIn invites, via, via you know, quick follows on IG or Twitter. Like, yeah. that's, not, that's not an authentic relationship, right? So I would say my advice would be fight to have authentic relationships with the people that you want to work with and be a part of, yeah. part of and, and those will lead to healthy partnerships. So one little takeaway, just recently we had a, a Scotty Russell from Perspective Collective on the show mm-hmm. and he talked about making connections with people. And we specifically talked about a tactic that he uses that I, for me, blew me away and was super authentic when I was interacting with him, uh, uh, ex- asking him for a favor to be on my podcast. He responded on Instagram, not just with an emoji, not with a thumbs up. He recorded a video real fast and said, hey, Russ, thanks for sending me a message. Uh, it wasn't a video, it was just an audio recording. But he said my name, addressed what I was asking about and said, would be more than happy to help. And I was just blown away by that. Yeah. So if you guys want a little sneaky trick, it's not sneaky, but if you send somebody a quick video, Hey, blah, 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 blah. I, I've been following you for a long time. I admire your work. I'd love to talk with you. If there's anything I can do in return, I obviously want to try and, and, and give back as well. Most people are going to be over the moon that you've and impressed with that kind of um, thought that gets put into it. So, I mean, here's, here's, here's the thing. Like, I, go, I, I just keep coming back to the authentic relationship piece. Um, you really need to build that trust. Uh, there's a great sure. book out there. Um, uh, by Pat, I'm going to butcher his last name, Luke Bjorn. Uh, I think I'm butchering his name. It's called Five Dysfunctions of the Team. That first pillar of a dysfunction of the team is trust. Okay. So if you can build that trust, you're immediately through that door. So build the trust, lock in that yeah. authenticity, and the work will follow. These days, there's so much talent. Like you hit the hands. We could hit the hands right now. You go to industrial design, and there's just yeah. beautiful work. Like there's not a lack of talent out there. But I think there probably is a lack of authentic relationship and trust, um, mm. especially as you know you just get flooded by um, individuals seeking seeking um, you know work. So it goes yep. back to building that trust. So if you guys are in the heat of it right now and struggling to find 
new clients and whatever. I don't know. That's my takeaway from what you've said right there, Jacob. Be authentic. Mm. So moving on, we've got some other cool stuff that I'd like to talk with you about. Uh, one specifically being, what are your thoughts on how universities are preparing students for jobs these days? That's a great, yeah. that's, a, that's, yeah. a, that's a really good question. Um, so I think, I think some areas they're being really successful on is they're not forgetting the basics, meaning at the end of the day, okay. as an industrial designer, um, you got to learn how to sketch, you got to learn how to prototype, the physical, um, uh, whether we like it or not, um, even though we're in this digital age, physical and analog uh, is still king. That's how we learn. Um, if I can't hold right. something in my hand, um, I'm not truly, truly learning. So I think the good universities out there are still enforcing um, analog sketching, building that fundamental skill set. That's how we communicate as designers, building that physical. Okay. I think, I think the universities out there that are doing it better than others are also requiring, not encouraging, requiring internships prior to graduation. Um, I think. I have things to view, say about that. So I'm going to let you keep on going though. Subjective point of view. <laughs> I think that um, in Cincinnati, they're, they're, they're reigning supreme as it relates to industrial design schooling. I think Art Center probably okay. a little bit behind them, um, but sure. totally competitive. And I think both leverage their network um, with, with past students, past alum, and, and past uh, um, kind of uh, professional design agencies to help those students get those really high power um, internships. And why those internships are important is because when you graduate, Guess, I mean, we've all been there. You graduate, you're looking for that entry level design spot. And what does it say in experience? Like one to three years experience, but you're just right. You have no experience. Right. So you get experience. The internships, the internships with internships okay yeah. well and then you you bring up something that's important uh, I, I love my alma mater and i'm a, a, a diehard asu fan i'm in and whatnot i'll talk about till the cows come home but um i kind of felt like when i was going through my program and i know there's other ones that are like this too out there mm. um i felt like they said yes they knew the value of internships so they said you're required to get one good luck and that was kind of the end of it which kind of sucked because you're like, ah, I, I, there wasn't really much support in helping us get those internships. I didn't feel like there was, there was a couple, maybe a couple studios who knew ASU students do know their stuff and they're, they're good workers and whatever. And they would kind of headhunt us, but there's only a couple slots with them. And so it was really, really hard. So I don't know. That's kind of like, as we're doing Q and a spot with Q and a things like this and having student spotlights, trying to foster some relationships with students and working professional. That's kind of me out of angst from my frustration of being a so, student and not being able to find one. I'm trying to do something, but what can universities do so good and to, bad. I think yeah. it's good and bad. So okay. I think the frustrating point for a student is you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know how to facilitate that right. internship. You don't have that network built. Um, yeah. So as a student, that's really frustrating when you're told to get an internship and then maybe you're not getting the support that you're needing. Um, the good news to that is, guess what? Time to get after it. Time to, yeah. time to earn your stripes, right? It builds yeah. that self-reliance. It builds that um, being thrown in the deep end and learning how to swim. Like those that want it, those that truly want it, will you're gonna find make it a happen. Way to get an internship. Which, yeah, to that's, be that's frank, true. It weeds out the others. And that was how I was just gonna say. You know, survival of the fittest isn't, it's frustrating and, it, and it's tough, but there can be some benefits, you know. It's, it's starting out and even even after, you know, uh, a, a while in, it's it's competitive. It's competitive. There's no way to yeah. get around it. But I think, I think again, I, I go back to the authenticity part. The ones that truly want it are, in, are authentic about it and that have real true passion about design, you're going to make it. It might take yes. time, but you're going to make it. You'll find a way. Well, if there's anything that I've learned from talking with industry experts, having them on the podcast, I see the recurring th theme that comes through is they all say it was tough and I struggled and then this happened and this is how I mm -hmm. pushed through it. So if you're in that rut right now and you're like, oh man, this is tough and I'm having a hard time uh, keep at it because guess what? Everybody has had that. E even though the, the most uh, famous 
people that I've spoken to in the design industry have had a rut that they had to work through. So definitely, you know, trudge ahead uh, and, and don't give up. If you want to make it in the industry, it's more about tenacity than it is about inherent innate skill that you just somehow magically wake up with. There's just no such freaking thing. Well, I, am I, I right? Would, I would say talent doesn't really exist, right? It's, it's skill built over time. Like, I don't think I'm, yeah. I don't think I'm really talented. I think I've right. built skill sets over time that have become really mm. polished. Yes. So it's, it's that passion over time, over authenticity, like yes. that starts to make a really, really powerful package. Yes. And speaking of skills that you have developed over time, we all know that you are a freaking sketching master, dude. Like anybody who isn't following you on uh, Instagram, go check out at SketchFresh uh, because this guy is awesome at what he does. So I want to talk about sketching because obviously you've put some time, you put time into it. It wasn't something that you just did overnight. Um, Let's debunk some sketching myths then. You know, what are some of the things that people are like assuming about sketching that is absolute BS? Yeah, let's go. Okay. I, I mean, I can think of one thing out of, uh, off the cuff, you know, that I heard over and over and over again. In my experience, people just assume, well, you can sketch well. That's just something that you're good at. Mm. And, and, and it's absolute, I mean, I'll say that it's BS that to assume that people just become good at it because they have this gift. Um, mm. You have to learn how to sketch well. Am I right? Please it, preach, it, brother. It, tell us, yeah, tell us no, about how you get You're absolutely right. I think, I think some have an innate ability based on just the way their mind is constructed to better right. validate, understand proportion and, and dimension. That to hear me say that doesn't make them a good sketcher, just they have an innate ability to out of the gate to better understand proportion and dimension. Yeah. But 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 talent, I, I go back to the skill and time thing. Like over time, that skill will increase. It's just like a muscle. Over time, that muscle will get stronger and stronger. And it takes a repeatable theme of just getting on the bench and put it in your time. Um, yeah. And doing it with purpose. Like don't just don't just just step up to your desk and sketch blindly. I would say okay, sketch okay, this is good. Look up, look up. These days, there's a ton of YouTube tutorials. Our pal um, Spencer Nugent, he has an entire YouTube yeah. channel dedicated to industrial design sketching. Like yeah. it's more accessible than ever to be able to access this wealth of knowledge that all these amazing, skilled, highly skilled individuals um, are are giving away for free. Um, yeah, I can, I can really understand the intimidation of you know getting on Instagram and just seeing you know some really beautiful um, you know visual work uh, that one didn't happen overnight. Two, it yeah. probably flexing a little bit to get on the gram and get that uh, sure uh, you know hit rate up. Um, and three, that's a hundred percent not how they're sketching a hundred percent of the time. Oh, this is good. Go on that. So in the day to day to day, how would you like? because you know, maybe we're that's probably like the achilles heel of what we're doing when we're having like these sketching workshops and these sketch competitions mm -hmm. that go on instagram and whatever uh we're kind of painting the picture that we are selling pretty pictures as designers and and we this is the deliverable is putting this out here here we've got this awesome cool sketch and this is what your day-to-day -day job is gonna look like but I'm, I'm hinting, I'm, I'm getting well, the drift me, that you're like, that's me, not accurate. Go let ahead. Let me unpack that just a little bit. I would say we're not sure. selling sketches. We're not selling sketches, we're selling emotion. Mm, okay. Yeah, so like that. emotionally, I want to captivate you. And I can do that uh, via my verbal um, uh, kind of wordplay. I can do that via a, a, a sketch or render that makes you feel something. But I would say sure. that's how I'm selling you on concept is the emotion. If you build up that emotion, you capture people. Um, the sketch itself, um, I think there are three paradigms of, of industrial design sketching, and I didn't admit this. Um, uh, it's something that I think the community kind of accepts and adopts, but really three levels of sketches. Sketching okay. for yourself, sketching for your peers, and sketching for your client. And I would say like 90% of the time, you're sketching really loosely, kind of back of the napkin type of sketch oh, okay. for yourself. Yeah. 
as I'm blowing through CAD and thinking about like draft angles and part lines and stuff, I'm, I'm sketching kind of dirty, you know, kind of quick. Then there's the next round um, where you're sketching for your peers, right? And that's for critique. That's really like finessing design details or well profile into the web. Um, I would say that's when it really matters because that's when you're really like unpacking sure. and trying to like, trying to um, really get at the crux of what makes this design beautiful or functional or whatever. Um, and then there's like that last like 15, 10 to 15 percent sketching for the client. Um, and that's kind of the the, the big hoorah, um, you know, sexy render, sexy visual. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So I want to know then if I guess the question is, do you have to be really good at sketching to make it in the industrial design industry? Like, is that going to make or break whether you're a good designer is if you can do those super sexy renderings? I would say you have to be able to communicate with your sketching. That's price of entry. Price of entry is being able to communicate your thoughts and being able to articulate others' thoughts through the sketching medium. Because that, yes. that visual sketching medium is how we communicate, it's how we talk to each other, it's how we talk to factories, it's how we talk to clients. That's the price of entry. Okay. The fidelity of that sketch will better allow you to, to flex that emotional piece that I was speaking. Okay. So the less like engaging, the less sexy it is, you might not be able to like hit on that emotion bucket that, that you're wanting to hit. The more more um, developed, more smooth, more sophisticated that sketching skill set is, I think, the more accessibility you have to, to use that emotion bit. Yeah. Well, that's good. And then you kind of point out something that we have to consider, you know, you're, you're talking on the emotional connection when it comes to our sketch work. Um, we have to step back from our work when we're done with it, quote unquote, done and say, what's the story I'm telling? What am I communicating? Is this blank? You know, whatever adjective descriptor, is this aggressive? Is this modern is this minimalistic look at your profile look at the the silhouette of what you've sketched and then ask yourself is this filling it telling the right story and making the right emotional response and if it's not well um maybe you need to readdress it and try again <laughs> so i guess the follow-up question to that that i'd like for you to kind of go off of is there's been a number of people that have talked with me in the past that have said i'm slow at sketching Mm. Is that okay? And if not, what can I do specifically to get faster, better, more confident in the way that I am sketching? Uh, well, preach. So, yeah, that, well, <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you what thoughts I have. I don't, I don't, know, okay. I don't know if it's like any thoughts or not. But um, so uh, speed, speed develops over time, right? It's okay. something that I, I, I personally um, drill, like intentionally drill speed. Um, and there's probably some weird equation of like quality and quantity, right? Um, but ultimately, I try to drill speed um, because time is money. Um, yeah. Uh, and that, again, just takes time on the bench. The more you practice, the quicker you'll be. Um, I, I, I have a, a core focus whenever I step up to the page. I really think about the economy on my line. And that tends to speed my sketching up as well over time again. Meaning there's, I try uh, whatever line I'm putting down, that line is important. So not yeah. a lot of like like scribbling and like like trying to search for my form. I don't tend to do a ton of that. Um, over time, I think I've developed this this ability, this skill set, um, to to really have a, a high economy of line. And and the few lines that I do put on the page, um, I guess the intent is that they truly mean something to what I'm trying to communicate. So it's mm. again, it just it just comes down to skill set, which which can be taught, which can be learned as long as you put in time. So yeah, I really like that. You kind of, every line has a purpose. It's like you're, you're maximizing every single stroke on the page. And I don't know, maybe that's an exercise that you can do is like pick one object that you're going to draw over and over and over again, count how many lines that you hit on it the very first time, 30. Okay. Now how let's do it again. Okay. I'm down to 25. How can I do it again? Let's do it. You know, d maybe doing something like that and practicing over and over again. And I guess you kind of hit on something there too. At least it's been my experience. I have to learn how to draw specific things. It's mm -hmm. not like, it's not like you, and, and you hit on that just recently on Instagram, you showed a post on, um, 
some sketches that you did of some bicycles mm -hmm. and you're like, I do this, you hit, right. You get that plane going down it and you've got this and you do the ellipsis for this. And this is how you connect. There's a systematic way that you've learned to draw bicycles. So now if you had a client that said, Hey, I need to do a bunch of different bicycle renderings. Well, and that's really what the, circumstances like that at least for me uh at one point i was doing so just recently i did capital equipment for a medical device a, a, a pump that we were working on for one of my clients and um mm -hmm. i tell you i've i can do those square geometric kind of capital equipment things i did so many of those over and over and go by the time i was done i probably could teach a tutorial oh well this is how you do this fast and do this because i did it so many times and you have to practice doing that. But then if somebody said, now draw cars, Russ, I'm like, okay, like I'm going to have to have you look away for a little while and have me practice doing some cars and, and flush out that, oh, do it over and over and over again until I get the system down of how to do it. And then, you know, you have to learn how to draw there's, things. So if there's three areas that are the most difficult things, uh -huh. everything else could be lumped into like a cube. Like you can sketch a cube, you can only sketch everything, but there are three things I found that require diligence and practice on those specific things. One of them is cars. Cars. The second thing, the second thing is figures or human, human figures. Yes. And the last thing is footwear. And it's those three things specifically for me, I found because everyone knows when a car looks off. Everyone knows yes. when a human figure looks off or a piece of footwear looks off because it's all about the proportion. So those proportions take time to learn. But yeah. Once you get the proportion down, then it's just kind of rinse and repeat. Um, but those three things specifically are consistently hard and everything else, almost everything else on the planet, you could probably sketch by like starting with like a soft square and then just and, kind of like, and, uh, build and form from there. Build some shapes and forms out of it. Exactly. Great advice. So I want to ask you this now, Jacob, uh, when it comes to prioritizing these different uh, industrial design skills, um, I would like to have you tell us what you consider most important and then work your way down. So the first, these are different things that we've got. We know that industrial designers sketch. We talked about that for a while. CAD modeling, rendering, yeah. like in key yeah. shot, modeling, like in foam and then wow. graphic design. Those are the things. Yeah. So like, if you were to prioritize all of those different things and you're gonna tell people, you gotta nail this first and then work your way down. Prioritizing that, what would you say the order? So I'll reiterate, sketching, CAD modeling, rendering, modeling, graphic design. Got it, makes sense. Um, uh, sketching is the price of entry. If you can't sketch, you're not. So number one, sketch, under. boom. Yeah, you, 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 I mean, you're, you're not. That doesn't hear me say you don't have to sketch well, but you have to sketch. You have to be able to communicate your design. That's the price okay. of entry to be an industrial designer. Uh, next important skill set, I would say physical physical prototyping, physical modeling. Okay. If you, can, if you can sketch and you can physical prototype, I can show you my proof of concepts. Like I can ah. get the point across. Yes. If you can't do those two things, they're probably not going to believe you. Meaning the sketch might communicate, but because they can't hold it or, or you, you don't understand how it fits in hand or, or whatever, um, they might not fully believe you. Um, so those two things for sure. Then I would probably say CAD. CAD's um, number three, okay. CAD's number three for me. Um, so there's like base level CAD of like just under crashing primitives together. And then there's that next level of, of um, complex surface development. Um, mm -hmm. So that's like, phase one, phase two of your, your kind of CAD development story, the quicker you can get okay. to that phase two, the more dangerous you'll be. Um, so that's kind of my, more of a side tangent. Um, the, so that's three things. The fourth thing I would say would be rendering, but you're probably doing that kind of tangentially with your CAD work because you want to okay. communicate your CAD to yeah, your yeah. And the clients, right? Um, and then the rendering kind of goes to that kind of that, um, that emotion piece, like, and that's, where Behance is, you know, completely full of and what IG is completely full of these beautiful sure. like final renderings that make you feel something, right? Um, so there's there's like uh, an intangible there that's really important. Um, so if you can do that, rendering is definitely important. And then graphic design, I'm putting that last. Um, yeah. Because at the end mm. of the day, we're not graphic designers, but I would sure. also say the caveat to that is graphically, uh, you need to be able to communicate too. I think my expectation yeah. is if you're running those skill sets in order, the graphic design piece will just kind of naturally manifest itself. You'll kind of naturally pick that up. 
but you don't have to um, at least, again, order of those priorities. Um, that wouldn't be a core focus of mine. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, where you're saying like graphic design kind of just almost as like a package deal kind of comes with it. But I would almost argue the value of taking time to specifically polish up and develop some graphics skills because point being, um, I mean, sketching, I agree with you sketching. Yes. Number one modeling, uh, getting your hands dirty out in the shop. That's like, almost i don't know people make it sound like that's a dying skill but i'm not sure no. i don't know if i agree with that i feel like Definitely. universities are, are are doing it we're, we're taking the time to to kind of show that um but uh cad model you know rendering just real quick Russ, you know what it is it's go a ahead crutch. it's a crutch the people that say i don't need an analog sketch i can digital sketch the people that say that i can cad model i don't really need a physical model it's a crutch they just don't yeah. really do those activities. They're not placing high value, but at the end of the day, in order to sketch it digitally beautifully, you have to sketch analog beautifully. Analog beautifully. Ooh. And to really understand form, you have to get physical. Mm. Yes. And I agree because then when you're making something in for real life, in, in, in real space, you have a better understanding of the form uh, and scale of everything it's easy to get cad vision and you just say oh it looks beautiful it's great i can zoom in and it's the right size well funny uh you don't zoom in in real life and then getting all the proportions right having an actual physical model that you hold can just mm. make or break a design because you assume looking at it it's perfect it's beautiful it's got the golden ratio it's gonna work but then you hold it in your hand and then it just uh, we've got a comment that I think is good right here. It says, we are losing the art of makers. There are forecasts that trade jobs will be the highest paid. Uh, there are forecasts that trade jobs will be the highest paying jobs over the next decade. Got to make stuff. It's, com it's competitive advantage. Yes, Steven, that's a good comment in the chat. Uh, yeah, we got to get that out there and do it. And so we can't abandon that. And I don't think that universities are doing it. I think that they teach it. Students do what they need to to pass the class. And then they're like, I didn't really particularly enjoy that. So I'm going to just back burner it and just do it in CAD from here moving forward. So you can't do that. Um, all this was on the topic of skills to develop and so forth. I, I put high on the priority list, given my background and so forth with graphics. I think that's high priority to learn graphics. I don't know necessarily wouldn't argue to put it I, that I don't think that it should be, um, it should precede any of those other skills that we just talked about. But I specifically added it to this list because if you're doing great industrial design work and you suck at doing presentations, it's mm. not gonna sell. You got to mm. do a good job, put together a polished portfolio and, 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 and really showcase your work in a compelling way. Otherwise, you're not going to effectively create that emotion. It's not going to come across polished. It, it doesn't matter how good the form and the idea is. If you can't showcase it with some good graphic design to sell it, then um, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. That, that's the gospel of Russ. I mean, somebody might dis disagree, but I don't know. What are your thoughts, Jacob? I mean, it's, it's a fair comment. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, at the end of the day, it just has to look beautiful. It has and to look it, beautiful. These, these days, I, I keep coming back to that. Um, and if it's not beautiful, work that problem. Make it beautiful. And Make it beautiful. What, if you don't know what beautiful is, get your coworkers or your peer group to, to crit you um, so they can help you understand that. Yeah. Okay, you just mentioned something really good right there. So we're talking about making something beautiful. And if you don't know what beautiful is, then you're going to get somebody to help you figure that out. So kind of along that same vein, I want to know what makes, in your opinion, a designer one better than the other one. So if we look at like senior designers, are they just like gifted with a better eye for what looks beautiful? Or um, are they just better at working through the process and making decisions to produce a better, more beautiful product? Go. That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> um, experience, experience will allow you to build and refine your skill sets. Okay. Period. Um, I think as your skill sets increase, you both objectively and subjectively build yourself up both internal confidence, which is huge. Okay. But also outward facing, people see those things increase 
Um, and they're like, yeah, that, that person can, they're good to go. They, they got it. They got it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think time also gives people experience There's something to be said for like, just being able to run the track and knowing where the turns are and knowing if a tire falls off, how to work that problem and knowing if I'm in the dirt, what team members can help me. There's something about like running the track and having fluency, being able to do that, that really makes someone strong. So Mm -hmm. again, it goes back to time. Like the more inexperienced, the more junior you are, you probably haven't had an opportunity to run that track very often. You probably also haven't had the time to really, really buffer those skill sets. Um, And it's kind of a combination of both the skill set and the experience and be able to problem solve your way through, you know, every situation mm-hmm. that builds a better air quote designer. Yeah. Okay. Well, that being said, would we preach and teach design thinking as the golden standard? So kind of the question that I'd like you to riff on is if we're all using the same formula here, uh, to develop solutions, shouldn't all solutions really be good, no matter the level of of designer, new, old, experienced or not? So if we're using the same formula and so forth, why do we still see stupid stuff on the market that's ugly and fails? <laughs> that's what I want to know. So um, if we're use, everybody we're says the same the thing. Same formula. That's my okay. answer. Okay. Well, because we, we, we say we are, or we're using, we're design thinkers, we're doing this and no, that. So no. some people are just better at, because if you go on every single major design website, they're going to be like, oh, we're innovators. We do this. This is our process. And we do, and they talk about well, the process they're using. Supposedly everybody's doing the same ethnographic research. So everybody's doing the same human centered stuff, but they're still as seen on TV caliper products and- <laughs> real good ones you know what i'm saying so what's going on and how it will uh, yeah i mean t- steven said it perfect in the chat uh there are some groups some individuals that seek the solutions first and that's just a backwards way of doing that what you need to do is drop back to the consumer and make sure you're kind of solving to our core basic fundamental consumer need or a pain point that either hasn't been resolved or could be better finessed to create a better overall experience so I would say if you're doing that, then you're mm-hmm. on your way to creating a great product. But mm-hmm. then it's you have to insert kind of like that beauty piece. You have to insert the functional piece. You have to insert the consumer functional need um, uh, piece, uh, which is a dance. It's this like you know gnarly yeah. salsa dance that you have to rely on a lot of cross functionals as well. Um, you know the brand team. If if the brand team isn't getting the idea out there is that selling it, um, then guess what? You're going to sell zero units. Um, yeah. You have, to have a solid R&D team. You know, it really is a dance, but I guess all of this, whether you're on the brand side or the R&D side or the design side, it really starts with that consumer. If you're solving for that consumer pain point and that consumer need, then you're, you're well on the way. Yeah. I think that just like you said in the chats, we just had somebody said, you know, we, people want to, they don't want to drill. They want a hole. And if we're designing that, that's a good, just a good way to sum it up. You know, Steven in the chats, Who that's the a great that? comment Steven. right there. My yeah, name, that, so great Steven, stuff. Steven, just shout, shout out to Steven real quick. Uh, he, he's a okay. worker from uh, uh, Prieta Days. Um, he's actually still there, um, but he uh, he had a huge piece in um, developing, uh, uh, helping develop me kind of um, on the early set of my career too. So just shout out to Steven. Oh, cool. Well, Steven, appreciate you joining in and the great comments because, yeah, that's absolutely what's the difference if we're focusing on providing people a drill and that's what we're looking and we're missing the point. The point is to put a freaking hole in it, then that's probably what's making it so we're going from one to the other. Okay, so. Jacob, as we're coming up to wrap this thing up and we're going to open up the lines to everybody so they can ask you questions directly. I want to have, there's just a couple left before we do that, questions that I got. One being biggest career flop and how did you recover? Oh. Was it that freelance thing right at the beginning? I mean, I don't want to, you know. No, that's, no it's, a great, it's a great question. Um, I actually don't think my biggest career flop was an actual career move. 
Okay. I think I think it was probably more a fundamental mindset thing. There was a period. There's been, and I think we all go through kind of like pumps and hurdles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course. I'm not be too critical, but I'm going to be critical myself. Um, there was a period of my career where I think I I, I just became complacent, and oh. it was kind of this death spiral. And I think that complacency. Um, it, it, it got me kind of just bummed out. Uh, it got me kind of off my axis, off my center. And, and what pulled me out of that was realizing, you know, I, oh, this is not where I want to be. And I, and I kind of pulled myself out. Yeah. I think, I think there've been times in my career where my ego has gotten the best of me. And, and I think, uh, uh, you know, hindsight 2020, um, yeah. taking a step back and, and being more genuine and, and modest, uh, about everything. Sure. Um, I think, I think, especially starting out, if, if I could have doubled down on those things and just been better at that, I think it would have just made me want a better human being and, and a better, better teammate too. Yeah. So what would you sum that whole thing up by saying, what is your do as I say, not as I do piece of advice for people in the industry? <laughs> or maybe not as do as I say, not as I did piece of mm -hmm. advice. Be honest with Don't yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Because I think I think it's really easy to to, to lie to yourself. Like we don't want to oh. face those demons, right? We don't really want yeah. to admit that our sketching sucks or it could be better. We don't really want to admit that um, you know, I could I could I could be I could be better at talking to Susan and accounting, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um yeah. so just uh, honesty. Okay. Well that's good. All right, kind of going along with your advice as right as we as soon as you answer this this last question for me right here, we're going to go to a commercial break and then we're going to open up the lines for Q and A. Cool. Um, I want you to tell me then. It's similar to that other one, but uh, you what is your variable? Meaning, like, what has been your thing that has been the secret sauce that because you've done this, it has been a catalyst for change for you and has helped you become. The designer that you are today willing to learn willingness to learn has willingness. been your variable i think i think i, think I, think I could like the, the softball answer that would have been like like i sketch really well or i'm Fair. great at building relationships or um I, yeah i i think i think i'm okay at those things um Fair. but i think i think the the willingness to, to learn and it kind of goes back to honesty piece, recognize when I can be better at something and then double yeah. down and being willing to learn. Uh, that That is really, really served me well. That's really what's done it for you. Yeah, well, that's great advice. We definitely, being humble, being willing to learn, being stubborn enough to keep with it and mm -hmm. even though we're we haven't done the best and pick ourselves back up and, and go forward with it i think that's all really what makes or breaks somebody in the industry all right without further ado ladies and gentlemen we're going to have a quick commercial break there's going to be an interactive set of questions there submit your answer we've got some cool giveaways that have been given to us by our sponsors so be sure that you guys submit your answers and then we're going to open up the lines for our q a stay tuned I thought that if I could learn how to draw anything, then I could communicate anything. And if I could communicate anything, then I could design anything. Sketching is really the best way for me to get an idea that's just locked away in my mind into yours. I never wanted my ability to communicate an idea to be a barrier to the types of ideas I had. One of my favorite quotes about design is all design is is a little bit of logic, a little bit of taste, and the will to collaborate. I can do this and you can draw on top of it and do a riff and an iteration. It doesn't have to be my idea. It doesn't have to even be 100% my vision. It just has to be the best thing that we can possibly make. A rendering or a CAD drawing, that is a statement, but a sketch is a conversation. <laughs> it literally just takes dedication.
All right. Well, I hope you guys submitted your stuff. We had some on there. We'll be sure to follow up with you afterwards. We appreciate your participation. We did get some cool things sent into us. So you're actually going to be winning a free giveaway. This was sent to us by our sponsor um, in Chicago, Beyond Design. They designed and developed this buzz brush uh, years ago. It was sold in Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know that it's on the shelves anymore, so it's kind of a limited edition thing. They sent us a whole box of them. It's a cool tool that you can use, because I know you guys like to sit and eat your Doritos at your desk, uh, to clean out your food and junk between your keyboard. Uh, little keys. So that's the thing right there. And it's even got a little LCD screen cleaner on it. So that's one of our giveaways. And we've even got a copy of this game is nuts designed and developed by yours truly it was completely funded on kickstarter if you guys enjoy smashing hands bruising egos and losing sleep you're gonna love playing this game is nuts it's like speed uno and skippo had a crazy angry cantankerous baby so we are going to open up the lines for some q a we appreciate you guys sticking with us um i'm gonna open it up steven We've appreciated all of your comments up to this point. We're going to unmute you and allow you to give a shout out to your buddy here, Jacob. Come right here. Unmute yourself. What's up, man? Yo, brother. How we doing, <laughs> man? this is great. It's good to hear from you. Listen, yeah, this, we... guy, this guy, this is a rock star right here. I mean, I've been at Purina for 16 years and uh, got the chance to work with him for three or four of them and uh, sure. got to bring some, some real life, actual market products to life that, that drove the needle. Yeah. You know, my, my career has been, you know, evolved less ID and more design strategy, helping, helping drive the business. But dude, you know, everything he's saying is so spot on. I love the yeah. authenticity play. I mean, we share a lot of the same, same, uh, same DNA, man. It's uh, authenticity, be true to yourself and have a learning growth mindset. That's uh, that's that's gold. Um, you should, anybody who has a notebook right now should be writing that stuff down because uh, yeah. those are life philosophies, quite frankly, um, well, sure. and have gotten me to where I am, and definitely is gotten him to where he is and where he's going next, man. Only but only upward. So nothing but love for this guy. Yeah, no, we I mean, appreciate the, it. The same same back to Stephen. Like I said, Steve, Steve and I go way back. Uh, uh, the Prina crew back in the day, really really tight knit. Um, I, I mean. All love, all love, Stephen. Hey, I want to chat. I, I got a question for you. Yeah, this, yeah. this is a Q and A. So, uh, yeah, give me the, your projection of where design is going in the next ten years. What's it? What, Ooh, that's what's good. it look like? You yeah, knew I was going to ask you something this, hard, right? Yeah. Just like, yeah. Okay, so let me let me unpack that. Like in general, in trends, in terms of like how we execute our process. What do you mean? Just in general, man, like, where do you see designers evolving to? Like, what is, what is the design field look like in 10 years? And what's the role of, I'll, I'll just even say, what's the role of ID in the future as things go more digital, you know, we look more, the, 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 the world just becomes more ingrained in screens and, you know, interactive technology and virtual worlds. I mean, we're, we're I feel like sometimes we're losing the sight of that physical art and craft that we've got. So what's the balance? Where are we going? I love that you asked that question. Uh, it's a great question. I would say, so on the sidelines, perceptionally, it might seem like we're kind of being pushed out of the way. Everything's digital. Nothing really needs design. We have these computers creating algorithms that, you know, uh, uh, you know outdate us. There's, there's the smoothing feature in Photoshop that allows your, you know, stroke to be like perfect. Like what? Um, but I would say that's exactly why industrial design is going to be prevalent, um, or not just industrial design in general, but design specifically solving design problems because we have to be more human. Like we have to find a way to make the digital age, whether that's, um, you know, audio, visual, the things that you're interacting with, art, augmented reality, whatever that is, we have to find a way to make sure that maintains its humanity. Um, I, think, I think there are apps out there, 100%, that have failed or digital experiences out there that have failed for multiple reasons, but I think one of the core, core reasons, the repeatable thing that you see throughout is, is they, they, they don't hit that human element. It, it feels a little foreign. It feels uh, just a little, little, little uncertain. So I think, I think design is going to double down. I think it's going to be needed more than ever. I think, I hope uh, we're going to find new ways to make these digital experiences more human. Um, like, I don't know about you, Steven, but, uh, me and my team these days, we're like all in on Miro, like that's yeah. fun. That's quirky, but, um, it's, 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 it's still a little kind of foreign. So how can we be better at that? So 
that's my answer. I, I think I think we double down. I think it needs to become things need to become more human. That's great. Cool. Well, we really appreciate you tuning in, Stephen. That was a great question. Another one that was sent in messages that we had earlier that I'd like for you to address. I think they're a little bit shy and they didn't want to hop on here and talk with you yeah. directly. But would you be willing? So tell us what are the things that you were looking for when people send you their portfolios? What is the thing that is going to make it stand out to be memorable? So, and I know that you've had an opportunity at Newell Brands, uh, you've gotten portfolios sent to you and stuff. What is one, What are some of the main things that stand out to you when you're looking to hire people um, and you're reviewing stuff that just makes you go, ah, oh, this guy or this lady, we should, we should address that too. Ladies, please, you're an integral part of this community and there's way more gentlemen in it than ladies. So we wanna obviously encourage you too. So I shouldn't generalize it. When people send you their stuff, what are the things that you just, get blown away by or what are the things you're first looking of all, for first of all because i know this is going to be recorded and people won't see it ricky biddle just joined the zoom call shouts to sure. ricky biddle this man is is like an unsung hero of the id community he's like the best known secret that if you don't know about it you should you should know about him uh, ricky just, we're just gonna quick, unmute you in a second a quick, a quick shout to, to, to <laughs> um so to, let me answer your question though um uh emotion if if emotion emotion piece if if your portfolio can make me feel something. I'm going to double down and, and look at your name. Like who, who sent me this? Um, if your portfolio is static, um, if I'm not feeling something, then, then I'm probably going to love that. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to brag on Jacob here for a second, folks, because back in the day, um, I was studying at university and I connected with Jacob Ballard way back then. And I sent him my portfolio and he mentored me and gave me great feedback and helped take my portfolio from one level to the next. Um, and with just like time, years gone by and so forth. And when we reconnected, he actually said, yeah, I remember you, which I was surprised and baffled by. Uh, just to, goes to show the his character, humility, very approachable, very nice guy. So if you guys do have questions about your portfolio and stuff, I mean, he's got limited time. I'm not gonna say that he's, he'll dedicate eight at his full nine to five time slot to helping you I'm with your portfolio. But that. yeah, reach out and, and, and really that's how most people are in the industry. They're approachable and and we are eager to help. And he certainly helped me in, in my design journey. And uh, and so appreciate you, brother, definitely. Uh, Ricky, since you've joined us, I'm gonna un ask you to unmute and so you can join the Q&A. Hey, how's it going? What's up, Ricky? <laughs> Thanks for the love, Jacob. That was unexpected, uh, but much appreciated. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm just now real, realizing uh, uh, Stephen Worth is, is also in this Zoom, Zoom call, Ricky, and we have uh, uh, another one of our designers from uh, Little Brands Hannah. This is just this is just like a reunion now at this point. Fun. <laughs> That's I, great. I, I finally got into the YouTube after like uh, getting lost in the links or whatever, and I get down and, yeah. I, and like I hear Steve's voice, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Well, I think the thing is, uh, this is this was recorded. Um, Russ is going to do his digital magic and uh, uh, edit this, and it'll, it'll, it'll be on YouTube for everyone to see. Sure. Definitely. But uh, yeah, any questions for him, Ricky? Anything you want to pick his brain about? I guess, like, uh, I, I missed most of the podcast, so, so I don't know what you talked about because I just joined. Um, yeah. Uh, so, my, I, I guess. For me, I just would make a comment that, you know, Jacob and I, like, I had a similar experience with you, or I reached out to Jacob, like, on Cora Flot or something years and years ago, and that's how we connected. Like, when I was, I think he was still a student or something, and I was working, we started talking okay. a little bit, and then one day, I'm at Newell, and I look over, and I see Jacob's head bobbing down the aisle, and I'm just, I was very excited uh, that, you know, he had joined our team there. Um what you so you know we know Jacob is sketch fresh but I don't know if you've seen any of his like uh the SolidWorks tutorials like working on the Logitech yeah. variations lately and I think that's something like I know people we know Jacob is sketch fresh but I mean he's got skills for days on other areas and I, I guess uh for me one of the big things was like in talking to Jacob understanding how he's able he has been able historically to stay on top of like the Instagram and like it's a regimented thing. Like, so Jacob, how do you bring that type of organization and things? How, how do you, 
I guess, recommend some of us who are less organized and less able to <laughs> schedule. Uh, how do you really, do it all, man? Really, like, use that superpower that you have. How can how can you tell some of us how to maybe get a little more organized or work a schedule or what do you do that keeps you on top of that? That's that's a great question. Uh, number one, thank you. Number two, I don't think I'm very good at it. <laughs> um, it might maybe maybe appear, but it's one of those things. Like once you once you like uh, like under, understand, I, I don't think I'm that consistent. I think I try to be. Um, but let me try to answer your question really, really specifically. I think, I think for me, what really helped me was um, doubling down on that discipline, recognizing that that was something that I was seeking. I was seeking um, to be better. And what I used to do that was this daily regimented um, uh, community source accountability platform to help me be better. And I used Instagram kind of at the start to kind of, kind of do that, like post every day, sketch every day, Things aren't going to be great, <laughs> but just do that like consistently. And over time, I think that discipline um, muscle muscle increased, um, and that's what helped get me through it. Like the refusal to 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 pass on a day, like a holiday, you're sketching. Uh, family's over, you're sketching. It's 11 p.m. and you, you haven't eaten yet, you're sketching. Uh, that's 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 my that's e easier easier said than done. It's really really difficult, but just doubling down on that discipline. Definitely. Definitely. I just, I, I have to though, and Ricky's going to, he's blushing right now, but Ricky, Ricky was like part of the OG squad of Core 77. Like Core 77 started in like 2004, 2005, like when Core Flat really started taking off and now it's kind of um, been uh, usurped by, by Behance. Like he was part of that crew. He is, I'm telling you, if you don't know about Ricky, look him up. He's a legend. Yeah. Look him up. Look him up connect with them. And that's what I definitely, everyone I'd recommend when we have guests on here, look them up, connect with them on LinkedIn network. We're building a family, a community of people who are trying to be mentors and take their stuff to the next level. Well, we appreciate everything that you've done with us here, Jacob, uh, all the time that you've dedicated and everybody who's tuned into our live broadcast. Want to remind you guys to hit that subscribe button, support the channel. We appreciate everything that you do. Um, yeah so next week we saw in the commercial we're going to feature uh, michael detulo on the channel so be sure that you don't miss that it's going to be thursday at one central time so be sure that you guys don't miss it Stay, you know get to the grind do and be i don't even know how to wrap this up i'm just gonna say you just keep at it guys keep doing what you're doing if you have questions you can hit us up info at the variable dot design. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks for the opportunity, Russ. Thank you, man.